In this video, I'm going to show you some of the highest paying career paths in finance and exactly what you need to do to get into these types of jobs. These are the same career paths in finance that can put you on track to making a quarter of a million dollars in just three to four years out of school. And today, I'm going to go through each of these career paths in finance step by step. Let's go. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking to yourself, what can I do with my finance or business degree that's gonna maximize my earnings potential? So with this video, I'm gonna cut through the crap and show you the exact career paths in finance that you should target to maximize your earnings potential. And at the same time, the types of career paths in finance you wanna completely avoid because they can totally flatline your career. So what types of careers in finance do you want? You want what I call a tier one job. Tier one jobs are front office analytical type roles where you're actually doing really interesting work, whether it's working on different companies, working on different deals, doing research, etc., versus a boring back office type job where you're not doing interesting work, you're maybe plugging numbers in Excel and you know it's not gonna do anything for your career. So why are these tier one jobs so attractive? Number one, they come with some of the highest pay in the industry. Number two, they're the most prestigious in the business world. Number three, they can lead to some of the best exit opportunities which come with even higher salaries. And number four, they come with the best kind of work. So within our career paths in finance, we have three main routes. Number one, we have the banking route. Number two, we have the asset management route. And number three, we have our stepping stone route. Now, when you're thinking the highest paying jobs for a finance major, you're probably thinking of stuff at a hedge fund, private equity firm, venture capital, etc. Now, these career paths are all designed to lead towards those types of jobs because, like I mentioned before, within three to four years out of school, if you get to the buy side and you're working at a hedge fund, private equity firm, or venture capital firm, you'll probably be making a quarter million dollars three to four years out of school, which is fantastic. So again, these career paths are specifically set up to get you to the buy side as quick as you can. But again, sometimes people will stick in the roles they have, don't wanna move, but that's totally fine. But more than likely, if you're a finance major, or you're a business major, and you're looking for that big bucks kind of job, that's the buy side. And we're gonna get into how to get there in a little bit. So first up, we have the banking route. Now, the banking route is probably the most lucrative, but at the same time, the most competitive route finance majors are usually trying to go for. So who is this route for? Primarily, this is for students that are on the younger side, primarily freshmen, sophomores, and even some juniors. Because again, the recruiting for this type of route starts very, very early. So you need to be on your game as soon as possible. So why are the jobs in the banking route so competitive? Obviously, it's the money. If you get a job within the banking route, you're probably going to make anywhere from $90,000 to $140,000 in total compensation right out of school. But again, the requirements are a lot tougher. Usually, it's going to take a year of relevant experience, whether it's a relevant analytical type internship or participating in an experience-based program like our ILTS analyst program. Usually, you have to have a relatively good GPA, and by that, I mean you're probably looking somewhere from 3.5 and up. Your school probably needs to be somewhat well-known, and at the same time, you probably have had to do a little bit of networking to actually get yourself in an interview. So what are the jobs within the banking route? Let's take a look. First off the bat, we have investment banking, which is probably the most lucrative and most competitive job for entry-level grads. Then we have roles like sales and trading, corporate banking, and even equity research. So first up, we have investment banking, 
which, like I mentioned before, is probably the most competitive yet lucrative role out there. You'll be making a lot of money, but at the same time, you're going to be working a lot of hours, probably in the range of 80 to 100 hours a week. Sometimes, in some cases, I've heard up to 120 hours a week, which is nuts. But again, investment banking is probably the most effective route to go if you're trying to get to the buy side. Usually, if you're in investment banking for about a year or two, you can do that and then move over to the buy side from there, whether you go to a private equity firm or a hedge fund. So it's a lot easier to make that jump to the buy side if you started in investment banking. Now, if you're trying to get more details on how to get into investment banking, take a look at our guide below. We go a lot more in detail on this. But as a quick overview, investment banking is primarily a deal-based business. You'll be working on things from mergers and acquisitions to IPOs to debt refinancings to leveraged buyouts, etc. So your job as an entry-level analyst will primarily be building different models, whether it's a three-statement company-specific model or a product-based model like an M&A model or LBO model. But at the same time, you'll also be working on pitch books to go over the details of various deals, depending on what kind of department you're in. Within investment banking, you can be on what's called a industry-based team, where you're focused on covering a different industry like healthcare, TMT, natural resources. You can be on a product-based team like leverage finance or M&A, or you can be on the capital markets side of things where you're in their equity capital markets group or their debt capital markets group. All of them are very, very great roles to start into, but in terms of which are probably better if you're on the M&A, Leadfin, or an industry-based team, that's more preferred than something like capital markets, although capital markets is still a great place to start. Next up, we have our group of corporate banking, sales and trading, and equity research. So obviously these roles are a lot different than each other, but I grouped them together here primarily because of the exit opportunities that you can get from them. Now, these are still really, really great jobs to have, but the exit ops won't be as good as the types you'll get from investment banking. So can you go direct to the buy side after going through one of these roles? Yes, but sometimes it requires getting some experience in investment banking or also pursuing an MBA and using that to leverage into the buy side. So what are these roles? So starting with corporate banking, it's somewhat similar to investment banking, but there's also a lot of key differences. So within investment banking, you're primarily working in a deal-based environment, whereas corporate banking is primarily focused on the credit side of things. So for example, in leveraged finance, which is part of investment banking, you're primarily working on high yield debt issuances that would be used for different mergers and acquisitions, transactions, leverage buyouts, etc. Whereas in corporate banking, you're primarily working on more investment grade type products, whether it's a term loan, a revolver, etc. Now, with corporate banking, obviously you're going to have lower pay, but that comes with better hours, which might work for someone that wants that better lifestyle. Sales and trading is pretty much what it sounds like. You know, you're doing a lot of trading work during trading hours. It can be really, really intense because obviously you're doing this work in real time. But at the same time, compared to investment banking, the hours can work better because when the markets are closed that you're trading in, you're pretty much done. So if you prefer to handle quick periods of intense situations where you're doing this trading work versus kind of the fixed long hours of investment banking, sales and trading might be for you. But like I said, you're not going to have those exit opportunities like you would with investment banking. Then we have equity research, which is, again, pretty much just like it sounds. If you've ever been on Yahoo Finance or just kind of looking through Google and you've seen a report that let's say this Goldman Sachs analyst put out a price target on Tesla. That's their equity research department where 
They're literally just putting out research reports on the different companies that they're covering. Now, key thing here is it's kind of tricky to get right into equity research out of school. So this might not be the best thing to look for in terms of an entry level opportunity. But if you can, equity research obviously can lead to a full-time buy side role occasionally, depending on where you are, but sometimes it might require that banking experience ahead of time or going through your MBA first. So as a recap, the banking route is probably the best career path in finance to go after. Number one, if you still have time on your side and you know, you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior, and can make sure you're prepared ahead of time, because once you miss the recruiting cycle, it's a lot harder to get into after, and it might require a stepping stone job, which we'll cover a little bit later on. Number two, you're absolutely going to need to have some sort of relevant experience on your resume to show that you've done work similar to this and that you're not just a complete newbie who's never known anything about the space. So those are things like having an investment banking internship ready, having a tier one type analytical internship that's still relatively close to investment banking, or going through a program like our Invest Like the Street Analyst program, where we literally teach you what you need to know for these jobs, but at the same time, give you experience doing this work so you have something to put on your resume. Number three, you're gonna need to have a pretty darn good GPA. So ideally, you wanna have something that's three, five and up, as banks tend to have the cutoff at about three, five. Sometimes you can still do it at three, two and up as that's kind of the next tier in terms of a GPA cutoff, but it gets a little tougher then. Anything below a three, two and you're in a much trickier spot, you're probably going to need a really, really strong connection to get you in for an interview, or you're going to need to go through a stepping stone job first, which we're going to cover in a little bit. Number four, you'll probably need to go to a relatively decent school. The more alumni that you have in the industry, the better it is and the more people that you're going to be able to network with. And number five, obviously you're going to have to do that networking. So you have people on the inside of these companies pushing your resume through to actually bring you in for an interview. Moving on, we have our second career path in finance, which is the asset management route. So what is the asset management route? It's Kind of similar to the types of requirements you would need for the banking route. So again, going to need to have some relevant experience on your resume. You're going to have to have a pretty good GPA. You'll probably have to have gone to a pretty well-known-ish kind of school. And obviously, you're going to have to do some networking to even get in for an interview. So within the asset management route, it's primarily where you're going to be working in the asset management departments of a big bank, you know, like a JP Morgan, or at places like Fidelity and BlackRock where they're managing their own assets. And you'll primarily be doing work in terms of researching different companies, doing research on different industries, doing work with portfolio management, etc. So again, it's really, really interesting work that's obviously a lot more relevant to stuff that you're gonna be doing on the buy side where you're actually working at a hedge fund, private equity firm, venture capital firm, and doing the same kind of shit. At the same point, the total compensation that comes with this is also pretty darn high. You're probably going to be making anywhere from eighty-five dollars to $110,000 in total compensation right out of school, which again makes the asset management route a pretty competitive yet lucrative route to go after. So how does the asset management route stack up against the banking route? So there's a couple things here. So the trickiest part about the asset management route is there's less opportunities available. So there's lots of investment banks out there, but there aren't as many big asset managers which are gonna have the same prestige and lead to the same exit opportunities like an investment bank would. As you'll see a little bit later on, I refer to smaller asset managers in the stepping stone route but the thing about those is while the work might be interesting, it's not going to lead to the same exit opportunities 
as it would if you're at a big asset manager, whether it's a Fidelity, BlackRock, or working in the asset management department of a big bank like a JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs. Those roles can lead you right to the buy side, whereas small asset managers, they're not gonna get you into those roles as easy, and you're either gonna, one, have to know someone who's gonna be able to get you in, two, go get some banking experience ahead of time, or three, go the MBA route and use that to leverage into a really, really solid buy side route. But we'll cover this a little bit later on in terms of the small asset managers. So moving on to our last career path in finance and probably our most important one, which is the stepping stone route. So if you're like me, you probably screwed up in school. And a lot of us, when you're in college, you don't realize how much you need to do to actually land some of these really, really good roles in finance, just like me. So that's where the stepping stone route comes in. The stepping stone route and the jobs within it are basically jobs that you want to get into, which can help redefine yourself and position you for one of the better jobs within the banking route or going direct to the buy side. So how do we get into jobs like this? But first off, we need to identify our weaknesses here. If you're looking at different career paths in finance and you think you need to go the stepping stone route, there's a couple things you're probably trying to overcome. Number one, you're probably late to the game, meaning you didn't start early enough preparing to land a job in the banking route. And that's okay. There's still ways to overcome being late, whether you're a senior in college and you're scrambling to find a full-time job, or you're out of school and don't have a job, or are in a role you don't like and isn't taking you anywhere in your career. Number two, you might not have the best GPA. If you're like me, you probably didn't have the best GPA in college because you might have slacked off, you might have partied too much, etc. It happens. There's still ways to overcome that. Number three, and probably the most important thing here, is you don't have relevant experience. So if you're applying for jobs that are in the banking route and you have no relevant experience on your resume that shows that you've done stuff related to those jobs, there's no shot you're going to get an interview. So these three things we need to overcome, and there's different ways to do that. So in terms of things you can do to overcome a weak GPA, lack of experience, not going to a good school, take a look at our post below where we literally go through the things you can do to overcome your weaknesses, lack of experience, etc. It'll dramatically help you out, even if you're on the younger side and you're trying to get an internship when half the internships these days still require some experience. So it's worth taking a look below. But if you're at this point and you think, okay, I might have some relevant experience I can use here. My GPA isn't all that bad. And I think I can do something to get myself on track here. This is when you want to take a look at some of these stepping stone jobs. So what are the jobs within the stepping stone route? So within the stepping stone route, we have four main buckets. Number one, we have credit. Number two, we have the big four. Number three, we have lower tier asset managers. And number four, we have corporate development. So let's start off with credit. What is credit? It's basically where you're gonna be doing work analyzing a company's credit worthiness. Now, this can be jobs like working at a rating agency, like a Moody's S&P or Fitch, where you're working on different companies, analyzing their credit worthiness, building models, et cetera. It could be working in a credit risk department within a big bank where they're literally doing the same type of thing. Or it could be working in commercial banking where essentially you're doing this type of work for a small kind of lesser known bank. Whereas if it was a bigger bank doing bigger deals, that would be corporate banking, like I said before. But again, starting off in credit is a really, really good space because you can use what you learned in credit to leverage it into a job down the banking route, whether it's investment banking or one of the jobs up there. And within the credit bucket here, you're still probably going to be making anywhere from 75 
to $95,000 right out of school, which is pretty darn good for an entry level role. Next up, we have the big four. And by big four, I'm referring to the big four accounting firms like PwC, KPMG, et cetera. Now, within the big four, I'm not talking about the typical accounting based jobs like audit or tax, which is usually what you do when you're an accounting major. I'm referring to the more finance based ones, which are valuation and corporate advisory. Valuation is literally where you're putting together valuation assessments on different companies, different deals, et cetera. And corporate advisory is where you're literally doing advisory work on certain transactions, kind of like you would at an investment bank. And the nice thing about these types of jobs is the work is pretty darn relevant to the types of stuff you would do at an investment bank or one of the jobs within the banking route. So by going the big four route, you'll be able to use what you learned to leverage into a job over in the banking route. Now, within jobs like this, you're still probably making a decent amount of money, and usually your starting compensation will be anywhere from $75,000 to $85,000 right out of school. Next up, we have the smaller, lower tier asset managers. So if you remember from earlier on in the video, I was referring to the bigger asset managers like Fidelity, BlackRock, and the asset management departments of the big banks. Now, the main difference between them and some of these smaller guys are the exit opportunities. So while the work might be the same at some of these smaller, lower tier asset managers, you're not going to have the same exit opportunities as you would by working at one of the bigger names. So within the smaller, lower tier asset managers, we have things like working at a search fund where you're like helping a private equity company find companies to buy. We're also talking about small private equity and small hedge funds where you're literally doing the same types of work as you would at a bigger name, but you're not going to have the same exit opportunities and the same compensation like you would at one of the bigger guys. We also have things like investment management, where you're literally working in the asset management department of an insurance company to almost offset their liabilities and do work there, which again is really interesting work, but it's not going to have the same exit opportunities as you would by going the banking route. So within some of these smaller asset managers, you're probably going to make anywhere from 60 to 80K right out of school, but that can vary a lot, especially if you're working at a pretty well-known but smaller private equity or hedge fund. Last but not least, we have corporate development. Now, corporate development is a pretty under the radar, but really, really solid role to go into. Essentially what it is, is you're doing mergers and acquisitions work for like a Fortune 500 company or like a small roll-up. So the work you're doing is really similar to the types of stuff you're gonna do at an investment bank. But again, you're working for a company internally and you're doing the work there. The nice thing about corporate development is you're also gonna have a much better lifestyle. So you're gonna have a lot less hours than you would in an investment bank, but at the same time, you're not gonna have that same kind of pay like you would at an investment bank. And within corporate development, you're probably making anywhere from 75 to $110,000 out of school. So again, this is a really great route to go because at the end of the day, you're doing the same types of work that you might be doing at an investment bank and you can leverage the types of stuff you're doing at a corporate development firm or you know within a Fortune 500 company to get into something like banking. So if you decided to go the stepping stone route, what are the next steps in terms of actually getting to the buy side? So Kind of like I mentioned before, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Number one, you can use the job from the stepping stone route to leverage into a banking job, which from there you can use to get into the buy side. Number two, you kind of stay in your job for a while, go get your MBA at a top 10, top 15 school and use that to leverage into getting a job on the buy side. Or if you're good enough and you got good enough connections, Use exactly what you did within your job to go direct to the buy side. That's a little tougher. And again, like I said, you might need to have some pretty strong connections and be really good at what you do. But 
it's not totally impossible. So as a quick recap, who is the stepping stone route for? It's for those of you out there that number one might be late to the game. You're maybe in your senior year and you know, you didn't prepare enough to land one of the jobs in the banking route, or you're out of school and don't have a job, or you're out of school in a job you don't like and you need to redefine yourself. Number two, for those of you out there that might not have the best GPA to immediately qualify for a job in the banking route. And number three, for those of you that don't really have the relevant experience to get a job in the banking route right away. So like I mentioned before, I would definitely take a look at the post below where we cover the types of things you can do to overshadow a weak GPA, lack of experience, etc. It'll help you out a lot. So as a quick overview, when you think of the highest paying career path in finance, that's the buy side. And I know I've mentioned it a bunch of times in this video, so it's probably important just to cover briefly. So if you've ever watched the show Billions or you've heard of these hedge fund managers who make crazy amounts of money, that's the types of stuff that you're gonna see on the buy side. And like I mentioned before, there's three primary categories here. You have hedge funds, you have private equity firms, and you have venture capital firms. And at the end of the day, your job primarily is going to be doing work in terms of analyzing different companies to invest in, doing work on analyzing different industries, etc. So there's lots of really, really interesting stuff you can do when you're on the buy side. And again, it comes with some of the craziest pay, especially as you move up the ranks. But in terms of what you'll make as a first year analyst at one of these buy side firms, you're probably looking at anywhere from $125,000 to $250,000 in total compensation. So for those of you diehard finance students that are really, really looking to get into one of those really cool investing types jobs, that's why I keep mentioning that you want to make sure you're on the right route to get into the buy side because at the end of the day, that's what the majority of you probably want. So if you like this video, feel free to hit like and subscribe to us by clicking the button below. So that way you can get notifications about future videos that we end up posting. But now I'm gonna turn it over to you. Are there any career paths in finance we might've missed? Or is there more things you would have liked us to cover? Feel free to let us know by commenting below. And if you're looking for more types of posts like this, feel free to head over to our site at tier1wallstreet.com where we have plenty more free information in terms of what you need to do to get into jobs like this.